This is going to be the first of your skills videos. Um, I'm trying to make these uh, things these, uh, as straightforward, uh, exactly what you need to do for your skills so that you'll be able to go into the lab and pass them right away, right? Because we want everybody to get through there once you get through there in a timely manner, yet we still want to make sure that you kind of have the basic idea of what we're trying to do. Uh, so if you have the basic idea of what we're trying to do, then uh, uh, that's all we can really hope in the, in the lab. Uh, you're not going to master skills in our in our nursing lab. Uh, what, what you'll do is you'll become familiar with what with what these skills are and hopefully why we do things in certain ways. There will be a quiz before each um, before each skill. You have to take that quiz. You have to pass that quiz before you're allowed to uh, to do the skill. Uh, and what the quiz is is it's just going to be. Uh, over things that I'm talking about here um, so that you will have an idea why we do what we do. I uh, just got to show that you kind of have the basic idea. Uh, and for instance, right now, I'm going to get going on, on uh, our gloving. That's our first skill. It's, um, donning uh, sterile gloves. Donning means putting on. Uh, so putting on sterile gloves. And you have to do it in a certain way because you can't want, right? In other words, you know, you, you can't put your sterile gloves on and pick your nose, right? It's common sense. Can't have boogers on your gloves. Uh, so, so if they're going to be sterile, you you got to keep you got to put them on in a way that will keep them sterile. Um, but with that being said, I really need to to uh, 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 point at something out. You got some gloves in your book, in your in your bag. Uh, they're in a box like this. Are these sterile gloves? All right. These are these are hanging in every every nursing every care room that you're in. You, whether you're in the emergency room, up in med surge, and right, they always have these these hanging in the room. And right? then you, the nurse walks in, should wash their hands, grab one of these. Right, right next to them, they usually have the hand sanitizer. So you walk in, you wash your hands, or you'll use the hand sanitizer, and then you put the gloves on, and you go about doing whatever it is that you have to do. These are not sterile gloves, right? These guys here are clean gloves, and the main their main purpose is to form a barrier. Right, they are a barrier between you and the patient. Um, you touch the patient with your uh, uh, bare hands, you get every germ that that is on that patient gets on your hands, and that's what you don't want. So this here protects you, right? And consequently, it protects the patient because what happens if I go in, I'm taking care of a patient here who has a uh, strep infection, or a let's let's make it let's make this good. He has one of those uh, flesh-eating bacteria, right? You go in there and you get that on your hands because you didn't wear your gloves. Well, it's going to hurt you, and it's going to hurt every patient that you go to after that. And you spread it to them, right? So that's why we wash our hands, we put this on, we take care of the patient, we take these off in a certain way, and then we uh, wash our hands again before we leave the room. That's just the way it's done. It's the way it's got to be done. Uh, if it's not done that way, uh, everybody in the hospital is going to have everything that everybody else in the hospital has. And that wouldn't be a good situation. Um, now, there's certain, now, that, after explaining to here what these are, these are the guys that you see in every room. These are the guys that nurses put on over and over and over and over again, right? On and off, on and off, all day long. But <clears throat> this is a sterile look. I believe you've got these in your, your kit too because you have to practice, you should because you get to practice uh, putting it on. So your red bag should have these in there. Now the big, there's a big difference. If you notice this here, now, in, where they manufacture these, they'll sterilize these gloves as they're coming off the line. And they throw them all in these boxes. But these, and, right? But then, these boxes are not sealed. They're not perfectly sealed, right? So, so germs can get in and out of them. They're open. I stick my hand in there. The next nurse comes in, sticks her hand in there. Now, granted, we did hand hygiene before, or should have done hand hygiene before we stuck our hand in there. Yet, we still are sticking our hands in there and pulling the gloves out. Right? Community. 
right? The community is sticking their hands in and out of it, putting their hands in and out of this this uh, um, box. So there's no way that they're that they stay sterile. Might start out sterile in the factory, but they don't stay that way. By the time they get to the hospital, they're no longer sterile. Believe me, they're clean, but they're not sterile. Sterile means that all the germs have been killed, right? Everything on that on that surface has been killed. That means you have a sterile surface, right? There's no bacteria, no no fungus, no uh, uh, viruses, no anything. There's nothing good or bad on it. It's all dead. Clean means it's clean. The worst stuff and the really harmful stuff is not on there, but there's still some there's still some uh, there still can be some bacteria. In fact, you know, I mean, we have. We have normal flora, which consists of different yeasts and bacteria all over. And, you know, completely covers our body uh, on the outside and all through our mouth, all the way down through to our to our anus. We have this, we have this uh, uh, this flora. So we got all kinds of bugs on us. <clears throat> now this here, you'll notice this is sealed, right? These come in individually packed sealed, so you don't have the community reaching in and out of grabbing them, right? So. There, each one is airtight sealed. It's sterilized, it's packaged in a specific way, and then it's sealed. And I'll show you how, how you end up going, going about putting those on. Uh, another, another thing is um, when you see, and you see sterile technique, and you're talking about like when you're putting on gowns and stuff for the OR, they're very specific on how they go about putting these things on. Right? Uh, what we're talking about is we're talking about but what you're going to be doing for skill is you're going to be putting on um, you're going to be putting on a gown for the purpose of a barrier, right? And when you go into an isolation, it's because this person has some disease that 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 uh, has different uh, isolation problems, uh, and we we will get into that uh, the different types of isolation. Um, but right now, I think we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to go about putting on a pair of sterile gloves. Okay, so something that you got to know is, of course, the difference when, when you need to wear clean gloves, when you need to wear sterile gloves. Um, yeah, clean gloves, every time you enter a patient's room, right? Uh, maybe if you're going to walk in there and just ask them what they want for breakfast or anything, but anytime you're going to touch anything in a patient's room, you need to, put, you need to do hand hygiene, put on clean gloves, and uh, then take the gloves off and wash your hands again before you leave the room. Uh, every time uh, uh, you enter a room, every time you're going to touch a patient, every time you're at a patient's bedside, every time you're going to touch the patient, you're going to touch the patient's stuff, any of that. So, like I said, long story short, just anytime you, you uh, enter a room. Now, when you start an IV, you look in your fundamentals book um, on page 467. It's got on there uh, things that you need for sterile gloves. Let me let me kind of kind of read this to you here. Um, you surgical asepsis uh, for situations uh, for the following situations during procedures that require intentional perforations of the of the of skin so uh, anytime that you're going to be doing anything like uh, if if you're going to be cutting in lacerating you know like when the doctor's removing the lump or something like that of course he's going to wear sterile gloves but it does have on here anytime you're puncturing it says, and it mentions in there uh, uh, when you're starting an IV uh, now, when you're do doing a central line, yeah, they'll, they'll be using sterile gloves. But when you are starting a peripheral line, you do not wear sterile gloves. You do use sterile technique, though. Uh, you use clean gloves. And when we go over starting uh, IVs, I will show you exactly how that's done. Uh, you're just things that you don't you don't touch anything that's going to enter the patient right you don't touch anything uh, that's going to touch anything that's going to enter the patient so uh, and there's a certain way of cleaning certain way of doing that but uh, quite frankly you know, if you had to put on a uh, uh, 
sterile glove every time that would take an awful lot of time and it would cost an awful lot of money because they're starting IVs all the time so there is a sterile technique that you can use without using the sterile gloves so when you start an IV you, you, you will use clean gloves uh, <clears throat> sterile gloves though when you're, if you're doing a sterile dressing change uh, the same thing though it depends on what kind of a dressing change you're doing what level of sterility you're going to need uh, if you can do it uh, there are very often times that you can do a sterile technique with clean gloves as long as you put down the clean gloves and you do it in a way that you don't touch anything that's going to touch the area that you're keeping sterile uh, and that's general uh, uh, septic technique that you're going to be using anyway uh, <clears throat> And so anytime you're going to want steroids, anytime that you're touching anything where the skin has been compromised, the skin is your first barrier against infection. If it has been compromised, in other words, there's been trauma, there's been a bad burn to the skin, anything like that, where you've lost that protective uh, barrier of skin, uh, you need to wear gloves, right? So you're dealing with a big cut, you're dealing with a big burn, put, you got to you got to put gloves on. Anytime you do a central line dressing change, central lines, what they are is they are an IV. You know, we know IVs that you stick in the finger, right? Or it's not in the finger, you stick in the hand, right? It's, Stick it here in the forearm and put it right in here, right? You know, you put these IVs in all of these different areas. Uh, but a central line means that you're putting the IV in one of the central central areas here. Right, you're going into the uh, subclavian vein, and usually the, the tip of the central line will be just there above the uh, right atrium of the heart, right? That's the superior vena cava. It might be the inferior if you're doing it down below, but usually most of them are started up in here and they'll go down to this and, and the tip of the IV will be in the superior vena cava. You do not want to get that infected, right? You don't want any IV to infect it, but that one there is just dumping right into your central system. You get an infection in there, it goes systemic right away because it gets into your entire system. And when you and when we learn about sepsis, you'll learn why that is such a big deal. Strict sterile technique is used when you change a central line. Uh, most of them are right here. I keep touching this, but on the on the uh, video, it kind of like switches it around. So it's usually right up in here. Could be either side though. So you got this, <clears throat> you got this porticath here. A lot of them are, are under the under the uh, uh, skin now. I uh, will go over what those are, but. Uh, so you, when you get the central line in here, anytime that you're removing the dressing and you're going to deal with it, you have to follow an aseptic technique. And there's a certain specific way to go about doing that so you don't contaminate the person. So uh, dressing changes. Uh, when, when the skin has been compromised, uh, you're going to use a, a sterile gloves. Uh, central dressing changes, central line dressing changes, you're going to use sterile uh, gloves. Invasive procedures, uh, when you are uh, in, in, invasive in a body cavity, usually you'll use sterile gloves. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, when you are doing a, uh, a urinary catheter, uh, which you'll be doing as one of your skills, and you're only going to have to follow a ster st uh, sterile technique uh, while you do that procedure. It comes up in a couple of weeks, maybe next week, I'm not sure, but you'll be doing that soon. Uh, and uh, uh, so... So now we've talked about donning your sterile gloves, uh, and I'm also going to talk about putting on uh, gowns, right? Sterile gowns, uh, sterile gown, or or uh, just isolation gowns. So um, there's different different levels of gowns too. Now a sterile gown that you will use, like over in the OR, you have to put on a specific way, and you have to keep it sterile the entire time. Uh, when you're uh, the gowns that you'll be dealing with most of the time are isolation gowns. You don't want to get any, um, you don't want to carry any germs that you might have on your uniform. You know that, and that's the big thing about gowns. You don't want to be carrying any, any anything that you might have in your uniform. And believe me, your uniforms get contaminated. You know, you change your bedding and stuff. And you're carrying linen in and out. And you try to hold them away from your body. That's one thing. You never hug your linen, right? You don't take the linen and hug it up next to you and carry it, carry it on out there and throw it away. No, you take your linen and you hold it away from your body, and you go like that, because you're trying to keep your gown or your your uh, uh, scrubs as clean as you can possibly keep them. Um, that being said, they're going to be contaminated. You consider them contaminated. So when you will see uh, the isolation. It is on page. 
the 467, I believe, Infection Prevention Control. Let's see. I think you are here in your book. Yeah, so the different kinds of uh, isolation um, that, that we have, you know, takes different uh, types of, uh, of um, equipment uh, and different levels of, of isolation and different levels of uh, barrier uh, that are required and just depends on what kind of what, what kind of uh, uh, infection the person has. Uh, uh, we have contact isolation, we have droplet precaution, isolation, we have airborne isolation, and we have a protective isolation. So contact uh, precautions, uh, that means direct body fluids. This is somebody who has uh, an infection. Uh, HIV is a, is a contact thing, so it's a, 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 and it takes, for that, it takes direct contact with uh, body fluids. Uh, um, the direct contact means that you come in direct contact with the body fluids, right? Uh, um, for instance, you've got the blood on your hands. Uh, there, there was, back when HIV first came out, there was a, a nurse in the emergency room that uh, somebody had been brought in and the person was spurting blood. So she, she, before she could get a glove on, she put her hand down over that and applied pressure until somebody who was gloved came over, took over. She went and washed her hands and then put her gloves on, but it was too late. She ended up HIV positive. Uh, she went around it. She went around uh, the country doing a lot of uh, speeches and talks about about uh, that uh, happening to her. <coughs> Indirect contact means that it comes from a person's body fluids. This comes from that, but but it can be. Um, it can be transferred indirectly. Uh, this is what we're trying to, to uh, prevent a lot of times with our gloving because we don't, I mean, we, we prevent the direct contact, obviously, but then the indirect contact would be us getting our hands dirty and then walking into the next patient and then touching now. So they didn't come in direct contact with these other, with this other patient's bodily fluids, but they did through me, right? There was an intermediate uh, thing there. Can also be contaminated instruments. There was a story years ago about a dentist who was doing some kind of work and he wasn't cleaning his instruments bef between people and he was giving from one person to the other, uh, uh, spreading the uh, disease. Uh, but, <clears throat> uh, so that's, that's contact precautions. Contact precautions, you need glove and gloves and gown. Right? And you need you need to glove and gown when you whenever you're going to be coming uh, in contact with a person on contact precautions. Uh, now another one is uh, droplet precautions. Um, and droplets is large droplets, right? These droplet precaution means that they that's the larger drop when they cough and you know the little little things that their, their book has in there. It's like at least, I think, what is it, five microns or something, whatever that is. I don't know how big that is, but it's the larger droplets. And they say that you should be protected when you're going to be within three feet of these people. Uh, usually when on entering the room with somebody with droplet precautions, you will go ahead and uh, and um, wear a surgical mask and, uh, of course, use uh, proper high hand hygiene. Um, it's also uh, if the droplet precautions usually isn't going to be spread like on your uniform, but then a gown is not a bad idea. But what's required is a surgical mask, uh, especially if you're going to be within three feet, of, three feet of this person, good hand hygiene. Uh, good hand hygiene on all of these, by the way. Um, airborne. Now, with, with droplet precautions, right? That's influence is a good example of drop travel precautions. But airborne precautions would be like tuberculosis, TB, or something like that. Very small, fine things, and they get aerosolized, especially if you use them in nebulizer uh, with this person. It gets aerosolized, and these little drops just hang in the air, right? And they hang all over in the air. Um, and so they, they can cause a lot, they can cause a lot more problems because it doesn't take the droplet going from going from one person directly to the other person like influenza. This one here hangs around in the air, right? So you, anybody in that room needs to be uh, protected. Uh, <clears throat> and the big thing about uh, somebody who's an airborne is you're going to wear not just a mask, you're going to wear uh, the N95 respirator, or uh, they've got a different one out. There. And I'm not, not sure what the other one is called. The N95 had to be sealed. I couldn't wear one because I had a beard. Uh